Hi, my name is Dennis Richardson. I'm the West Coast Manager of Codes and Standards for American Wood Council. Today I'm going to talk about the introduction of cross-laminated timber in the 2015 International Building Code and some of our proposals for changes to the 2018 IBC utilizing two or three hour rated heavy timber. New innovations in heavy timber incorporated in these code change proposals will allow heavy timber to safely serve in diverse structures including a three hour rated podium supporting other structures or as the primary structure for high rise residential construction up to nine stories and 100 feet tall. Because of environmental concerns, there has been a strong desire worldwide to utilize materials that are sustainable, require less embodied energy to produce, and have a smaller carbon footprint. This infill project in London is constructed with CLT but is fully covered on the inside with gypsum board. We will discuss fire protection in greater detail in this program showing how these structures are designed to be safe for occupants and firefighters in the event of a fire. In Norway, construction is underway on a 14-story housing project with heavy timber and CLT located over a concrete podium structure. Overseas, there have been a number of approaches to fire resistance, utilizing gypsum board and even intumescent paint. There is no shortage worldwide of creative projects using CLT in heavy timber construction. This community center project was originally envisioned with walls of tilt-up concrete, but the panels were redesigned utilizing cross-laminated timber with beautiful results. Cross-laminated timber was introduced into the 2015 IBC with the inclusion of its definition and reference standard PRG 320. It was also incorporated into the IBC heavy timber construction as a two-hour rated exterior wall with E119 two-hour fire resistance rating and an overall six-inch minimum wall assembly thickness. For type 4 construction, a minimum of 4 inch thick CLT floor deck is required and a minimum 3 inch CLT roof deck is specified in the 2015 IBC. Oregon is the first state to adopt these provisions as a statewide approved alternate method of construction. Cross laminated timber is manufactured by laying up kiln dried, sawn boards or structural composite lumber in layers that are perpendicular to each other and glued. Each billet of solid wood can be from 4 to 18 inches thick and up to 11 feet wide by 65 feet in length. Exact sizes vary by manufacturer. The resulting panel of wood is dimensionally stable in plane because there is no parallel to grain lumber because there is parallel to grain lumber resisting shrinkage in both panel directions. The shrinkage through the thickness of the panel is minimized because the boards are kiln dried before they are laminated with glue and pressure. The completed panel is planed and then milled to tolerances using CNC cutters. Panels are designed and shipped to fit together at the site, minimizing any need for site modifications and job site waste. Traditional CLT details are fairly straightforward using common hardware and connectors. From a seismic standpoint, this produces more of an ordinary structural system However, there is research and testing occurring that is developing special seismic systems of the future. This traditionally detailed CLT structure performed well when subjected to a variety of earthquake histories with full-scale shake tail table tests. After the testing, the building was dismantled and shipped back to Italy where it was reassembled and now houses several families. This multi-story proprietary system has been designed in Europe for 20 stories and a demonstration building of 8 stories has been constructed. The composite action wood and concrete floor system is tested for 2 hour fire resistance. One of the challenges was keeping the thin concrete floor system from spalling due to expansion of the steel reinforcement during fire tests. Because wood is predictable under high temperatures, exposed timber beams and columns can be designed to pass an E119 fire test for up to two hours. Wood has low thermal conductivity and forms a char layer that insulates large structural timbers from the heat of a fire. Chapter 16 of the National Design Specification, or NDS, gives the requirements for the design of fire resistance rated exposed timber and is incorporated into Section 722 of the IBC. Another AWC document, Technical Report 10, was recently updated and includes the history and more details and commentary on this method. The 2015 NDS was updated to include fire design of cross laminated timber in addition to traditional heavy timber materials already covered including sawn timber, 
include laminated timber and structural composite lumber, or SCL. CLT chars on the fire exposed side at an effective rate that is slightly faster than sawn lumber or glue laminated timber, depending on the thickness of laminations. This standard E119 wall test was on a 5 lamination, 6 and 7 8 inch thick CLT wall with one layer of 5 8 inch Type X gypsum board each side. It was loaded with 87,000 pounds of vertical load throughout the test and failed at 3 hours and 6 minutes. An E119 test does not measure the contribution of the structure to the fire during the test. The furnace is modulated to follow a standard time and temperature curve. The two sections showing a wall and floor on the left and right of this slide represent extremes with exposed CLT on the left, our E119 test with one layer of gypsum on each side in the center, and the other extreme, complete protection with several layers of gypsum applied in the fireside right. All of these can be designed to last three hours or more in an E119 fire resistance test, but they all behave differently. The exposed section of CLT to the left will contribute more to the fire and the contribution starts once the room flashes over. The CLT in the section to the far right will not contribute fuel to the fire at all until the membrane protection of the several applied layers of gypsum board is exhausted by the fire. If the fire goes out first in the example to the right, the CLT may never char at all or may do so in a very limited way. The single layer of gypsum board protecting each side of the center section, as provided in the 3-hour E119 test shown previously, may be compromised, but when the fuel in the fire compartment burns out, the remaining CLT wall will likely not have enough heat to continue combustion as a single wall. There are, are a variety of similar details where steel or concrete is protected in Type 1 construction. Concrete walls can use a similar method to provide additional protection if needed. Section 722.2.1.4 of the IBC allows additional gypsum applied to the outside of concrete walls to increase the fire resistance rating over and above that provided by the concrete. When gypsum board is provided for light steel framing, it provides 100% of the protection against loss of strength due to temperature rise. What if the wood is protected so it does not contribute to the fire? Depending on the amount of gypsum protection of the CLT and the fire load of the compartment, CLT can be shown to perform similar to Type 1A with minimal contribution and then burnout once the fuel in the compartment is expended. A draft document that chronicles various approaches to performance rated fire resistance of heavy timber structures from 3 to 10 stories is available on the NIST website at the web link shown at the top of the slide. This draft document suggests categorization of the contribution of wood structure based on the degree of encapsulation. See pages 7 through 10 for a brief read on this performance concept. Basically, the more critical and tall the structure, the greater the need for fuel to be able to burn out, thus self-extinguishing itself without collapse of the structure or continuation of the fire. A research project at Carleton University completed in 2014 looks at what happens when CLT structures are subjected to compartment fires with non-standard residential time and temperature curves and with varying degrees of protection. The rooms in this test protocol flashed over due to contents after 5 minutes and reached 1200 degrees Celsius after 20 minutes much higher than the standard E119 time temperature curve. This research shows with typical non-standard residential fire load, a single wall can be left exposed and unprotected without affecting spread of the fire while allowing burnout. Part of the conclusion found on page 175 states, overall, the partially protected CLT room tests demonstrated that a certain percentage of the room interior surface can be left unprotected without increasing the risk of fire spread or increased fire intensity. Our code change proposal G16515 is for a two-hour fire resistance rated residential structure and has all interior ceiling and wall surfaces covered with one or two layers of 5 8 inch Type X gypsum. Code proposal G16515 allows follows a model already used in the IBC as part of the Special Provision Section of 510.6. 
That section of the code allows a, allows a Type 2A one-hour fire-rated R1 and R2 buildings up to nine stories and 100 feet tall as long as the building is surrounded by 50 feet of fire separation distance and the stairways are segregated in an area enclosed by a two-hour firewall. Section 510.6 also requires the first floor construction to be 90-minute rated construction. This slide compares the requirements for our proposal G16515 of Type 4 construction with the existing Section 510.6 in the IBC. The big difference with our proposal G165 Section 510.12 is the building is two-hour fire resistance rated throughout instead of one-hour fire resistance rated in 510.6. Provisions are included in number four of this code change to allow FRT or non-combustible furring filled with mineral wool to be added between the layers of gypsum for sound attenuation. At least one layer of gypsum must be applied directly to the heavy timber. It should be noted in instances where the highest occupied level is 75 feet or more above fire department access, the high-rise provisions of Section 403 of the IBC kick in with all the applicable bells and whistles. While the thickness of wood structurally required for a nine-story building might on its own test for two hours, we have added the additional requirement for all walls to be wrapped with one layer of 5 8 inch Type X gypsum board and all ceilings to have two layers as shown on this slide. Additionally, all stair enclosures must be CLT with two layers of 5 8 inch Type X gypsum on the room side and at least one layer on the stair side. We are confident this will test for much more than two hours and the added gypsum provides an additional margin of safety both for occupants and fire personnel in the stair enclosures. Finally, it is intended that the structure allowed by this code change can be utilized above a three hour podium structure below conforming with section 510.2. A podium neither increases the height or number of stories in the building above the podium. There is room with nine stories above to put a podium below with other occupancy groups inside the podium permitted in section 510.2. A question has been asked whether or not this code proposal G165 is contingent on any other code changes. The answer is no. Our next proposal for a three-hour CLT podium G163 could be utilized here if approved. If G163 is not approved, a three-hour Type 1A podium could be incorporated as the lower building in G165 as currently described in Section 510.2. Our next proposal, G163.15, is to modify the podium section provision 510.2 that was previously mentioned, allowing a three-hour Type 4 heavy timber podium as an option to Type 1A currently specified. The three-hour separation has been shown to be readily achievable by E119 test. To make this construction minimize the possibility of contribution of the wood structure to a fire, a separate requirement is established for a minimum level of gypsum board applied to the outside of interior and exterior surfaces. And this protection is uh, specified in Table 510.2. This proposed Table 510.2 specifies the minimum number of layers of 5 8 inch Type X chip board applied to interior vertical and sloped horizontal surfaces. The number of layers is based on anticipated fire load by grouping occupancy or special use conditions into three columns in the table. The minimum number of layers on 5 8 inch type of 5 8 inch type X chip board ranges from 2 to 4 on the walls or other vertical surfaces of beams and columns and from 3 to 5 for horizontal or sloping surfaces depending on the anticipated content fire load. The occupancy groupings were determined by consulting Annex A provisions of A5.2 and a 5.3 in NFPA 13 to divide into light hazard in the first column and ordinary hazard in the second column. Table 508 of the IBC is used to help with placement of S1 versus S2 in the table and F1 versus F2. The third column came from occupancy group concerns related to expected fire load in section 903 of the IBC. 
It should be noted there is no Group H occupancy allowed in Section 510.2 podiums. Additional gypsum requirements are added to the outside of exterior walls based on fire separation distance. This is truly a belt and two sets of suspenders approach. The NFPA 13 sprinkler system is the belt. The protection provided by multiple layers of gypsum is one set of suspenders and the inherent fire resistance of the timber as it chars provides the final set of suspenders if and when the gypsum board is exhausted. As G165, a provision, as in G165, a provision is added for furring filled with insulation, provided that no less than one layer of gypsum is directly and continuously applied to the heavy timber construction. This provision for insulation helps control sound attenuation, as well as creating a mechanism for the installation of plumbing and electrical while minimizing penetrations into the protected CLT. As with any rated material, penetrations in rated construction serving as a separation will need to be appropriately addressed with listed penetrations for shafts. Tests on structural composite lumber or SCL wood members in July of 2014 have shown this additional protection provided by 5 8 inch Type-X gypsum board conservatively, can conservatively add 40 minutes or more for each layer on a vertical surface and 30 minutes for each layer on a horizontal or sloping surface to the fire resistance rating in an E-119 test. Support beams and columns for the 3-hour CLT podium separation can be achieved by E-119 testing or by the addition of gypsum board to the beams and columns calculated as exposed beams for 2-hour fire resistance in Chapter 16 of the NDS. This is included as a footnote to Table 510.2. The G-163 proposal for 3-hour fire protected heavy timber podium is more, more conservative than the 3-hour Type 1A podium in 510, existing already in 510.2 since the allowable area of the lower building in the heavy timber section is limited by the type of construction in IBC Section 503. The U.S. CLT handbook describing new technology in this presentation is available as a free download at masstimber.com or it's available as a link on our website at awc.org. This concludes our presentation today. We would appreciate your support on these code changes as well as any comments or questions about these proposals. AWC field staff contact information, including email and phone numbers, are shown on our website. Just click the About Us and Staff tabs. My email address is drichardson at awc.org. In addition, a page is devoted to information on code changes at our website as shown on the link at the bottom of this slide. Thank you very much for your time and we appreciate your input.